Hi, my name is Nixie, and I'm a second year nursing student from Langara. I'm currently placed at Lionsgate Hospital on the acute medicine floor, and I'm super excited to learn new things this term. This is the first term that I will be in an actual hospital and caring for more acute patients. I'm excited, but also am pretty nervous about doing a good job caring for my patients. Not to mention, I have a very scary and demanding clinical instructor this term, so I cannot mess up. She is known to girl students on medications and expect you to know every little detail about your patient. Scary stuff. Today is Monday, which means it's time for Monday night homework. Ah, uh, just in time, my patient assignment just came in. Looks like I'll be caring for Mr. X. He is a 56-year-old male with a history of left-sided weakness and partial paralysis caused by a CVA. He also is a pacemaker, had a cabbage procedure, and had rheumatic fever as a child. Seems like this time he was admitted for severe chest pains and shortness of breath, and it turns out he was having a bout of endocarditis. Along with this, he has orders for O2 2 liters by a nasal prong, vital signs regular, and activities as tolerated with cane. Medications also include antibiotics, Ventolin, Warfarin, and Amlodipine. Wow, what are all these long words? Looks like I have a long night of research ahead of me. Looks like it's late, but I haven't written out all my med cards yet. Should I sleep now or stay up a bit more to complete my handwritten med cards? It's Who needs handwritten med cards anyways? All the information is in my head and patient safety is number one. I'm going to go to sleep now. Good night and see you in five hours. Ah, time to wake up. Okay, I'm ready and excited for the day. When I arrived on the unit, I got a report from the night nurse. She said that Mr. X was very agitated overnight and did not have a good night's sleep. She warned me that Mr. X might be a bit grumpy and she was concerned about his lung sounds because he was quite wheezy overnight. After report, I took some time to check any updated orders and progress notes about Mr. X. I go in to do my safety checks and see that Mr. X is sleeping but is noticeably using extra force to breathe. At this point, I am very nervous. I have to check his vital signs and do my head-to-toe assessment, but I am scared of waking him. This poor guy didn't sleep well, but I also have very important assessments to do. What should I do next? Should I wait till later to do my assessments, or should I wake Mr. X now? Well, lucky for me, when I was standing there contemplating my decision, Mr. X starts to stir. So I decided to wake him up to get my important assessments in. At this point, I went over and introduced myself. Hi, my name is Nixie, and I'm the student nurse caring for you today. How are you feeling, Mr. X? What do you think? Can't you see I'm having difficulties breathing? I then proceed to adjust the nasal prongs and begin taking Mr. X's vitals. Mr. X's vitals were stable, except except for his SpO2, which was at 86% while in O2. However, Mr. X clearly was still experiencing shortness of breath and appears to be annoyed by my presence. I continued to talk to Mr. X and explain everything I was doing. I helped loosen Mr. X's clothing and sit him up straighter. Clearly none of this is working. Oh, this is why I hate nursing students, because half the time they don't know what they are doing. I was so taken aback by his comments and didn't know what to do. One part of me wanted to run away and get another patient. The other part of me wants to stick through this. What should I do? Just kidding. I decided to not let his comment discourage me, and I was more determined to prove to Mr. X that I can be helpful. I then remembered that Mr. X has Ventolin prescribed for PRN, and so I went to my nurse to ask if that was a good idea to give Mr. X. She agreed, and I proceeded to give Mr. X a Ventolin through nebulizer. The whole time, I stayed with Mr. X and comforted him. I told him that this medication will help his airways open up and help his breathing. Mr. X was apprehensive, but as the time passed and the Ventolin kicked in, Mr. X's breathing eased. I checked his vital signs once more, and his SpO2 was up to 95%, and his lungs were no longer wheezy. He felt more relaxed. Mr. X thanked me as I left the room to chart what had happened. After charting, I felt the need to check on Mr. X again, but he hates nursing students. Maybe I should just leave him alone and visit only when absolutely necessary? What should I do? He is quite intimidating. Ugh, fine. I'll go check up on him. Don't be a chicken, Nixie. You can do this. What happens if Mr. X is having another shortness of breath episode and I miss it? 
ugh, my instructor is going to kill me, and then I'm going to fail nursing school. No. Okay, we cannot let this happen. Let's go in. Hi, Mr. X. I was just checking up on you to see how you were doing. Are you still having difficulty breathing? Mr. X looked relaxed and was eating his breakfast. He looks at me and paused as if contemplating whether he wanted me in his presence. Then he said, I'm doing better, thanks. Well, that's a better response than I expected. Mr. X looks a lot less intimidating now that he's sitting up and eating breakfast. I should see if I can make him change his mind about nursing students. Maybe I'll use some of those interpersonal skills and techniques they've been teaching us in Self and Others. Yes, open-ended questions. Mr. X, how's breakfast? Oh my god, how's breakfast? Really, Nixie, is this the best you can do? Seriously. Same old, same old. I've been in this hospital for the past three weeks, so everything's the same for me. The stupid doctors don't know what the heck they are doing either. I've been on these antibiotics for my endocarditis, and it seems like it's going to be stuck here for a while. Oh, is this the first time you've had endocarditis? I saw in your history that you had a valve replaced in the past. Yes, I had rheumatic fever as a child. Now that I'm older, they found fibrous growth on my heart valves, and it didn't work properly. I had to get those, those valve replaced as well as a pacemaker. I hate the hospital. I feel like I'm stuck here all the time. After my last surgery, I had a stroke, which let me partly paralyzed on one side. Wow, no wonder he's so grumpy and hates nursing students. He must have been in and out of the hospital so many times. How should I respond to what he has just told me? Help! I'm so sorry to hear that. It seems like you aren't having a very good experience in this hospital. It definitely isn't the best place to be in all the time. Let me know how I can make this better this time around. I'll try my best, even though I am a nursing student. Throughout the day, Nixie took as many opportunities to visit Mr. X and keep him company as she could. She brought him warm towels and helped him sit in a chair beside his bed. Mr. X started to talk to Nixie about how long it had been since he had had a proper wash. He complained and said that for the past three weeks he had been in the hospital, he hadn't received a proper shower or bath. Nixie then got a bright idea. She decided to ask the nurse if she could help Mr. X to have a proper shower instead of just a bed bath. No, I wouldn't bother. He has too many IV sites and he's half paralyzed, so getting him into the shower would be hard. Just tell him that he can only have a bed bath. Nixie was sad. Shouldn't she, should she just leave it, or should she find another way to go about this problem? Nixie was determined to get Mr. X a proper shower. She herself couldn't imagine what it would be like to not have a proper shower for three weeks. This time around, she went to her instructor and asked about this problem. I would like to help my patient have a shower. However, my nurse doesn't agree because she thinks he has too many IV sites and getting him to the washroom would be too difficult. What can we do to solve this problem? The instructor saw how determined Nixie was, and so she suggested that Nixie wrap Mr. X's IV sites up in plastic wrap. Additionally, she recommended finding a wheelchair to help wheel Mr. X into the washroom. Nixie's instructor also offered to help her. Now Nixie just had to go report to the nurse about what her new plan was. Nixie told her nurse her new plan, and her nurse agreed that she could do it as long as Nixie was willing to plastic wrap Mr. X's IV sites properly and to not allow water to get near the pick line. Nixie told Mr. X the good news. Nixie, with the help of her instructor, was able to help Mr. X shower and clean up properly. She took the time to make sure Mr. X was clean and comfortable. At the end of the day, after Nixie reported off at the end of her shift, she went to say goodbye to Mr. X. Mr. X, I'm off now, and my nurse will be caring for you for the rest of her shift. Thank you for sharing your stories with me. Thank you for all the efforts you took to care for this grumpy old man. You will make a fine nurse in the future. No nurse has taken the time to give me a full shower, and I feel much cleaner because of it. No problem. So do you still hate nursing students? Yes. Except for you. <laughs>